Hi guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. Now I'm Marilyn and I usually do a craft on my channel, but on today's video I want to talk about something really important. And the thing that I want to talk about is sublimation heat tape. Now on a recent video I made this pillow and it turned out super cute. But when I went downstairs to put it on my couch and take a picture of it, I noticed a yellow stain on the top of it. So I'm going to turn my camera around in just a minute. We're going to go through the various tapes that I've used, what caused this issue, what the issue looks like, and then we'll wrap it up. So this is going to be a very, very short video. Now before I change the camera view though, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And then tap that bell and select the all notifications so that YouTube lets you know anytime I upload a new video. And then if you don't mind taking just a minute to go hit that thumbs up button, that helps me as well. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, then leave them in the comment section below. Now here's the pillow, and it looks really cute, right? But then when I saw this yellow stain right here, I was not very happy. Now the pillow's fine, but you don't want to spend five bucks on a pillow cover, money on your sublimation paper, your sublimation ink, and then have that happen. So I want to do this video today to show you the different outcomes using different tapes. So I have just a spare piece of polyester fabric. Now my four tapes, let me talk about them just a minute. The first tape I ever bought was this brand. This is Salizo, Salizo, not sure how you pronounce it. But I used that and I had very good luck with that. Then the other tape that I purchased is this wider tape. I don't recall the brand, but I've tried it and it works well. So I'll have links to these in the video description. Now these two rolls of tape, I recently put this one on my tape dispenser when my tape dispenser had run out of the Salizo. Now this tape was given to me. I got two rolls and it was free. Then this roll of tape came with some sublimation blanks that I got off of Amazon, and I had never used this until last night when I just tried it out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take just a small piece of each of these tapes, put it down on my cloth, and then I'm going to use my Easy Press 2 and heat it up. Now this one, the brand is something like Equity Baymar, something like that. I will have a link to it, but I'm going to label each of these. Kind of hard to read. <laughs> My handwriting doesn't look so good on there. I want to go ahead and label each one so we don't get them confused. Now the thing about these two tapes, I have no idea what brand they are. A friend of mine bought a package of this and I think it came with six rolls or so. So she gave me a couple rolls of it. So I'm just going to mark it with a question mark. And then this last roll, this is the one that came with some sublimation blanks off of Amazon. I bought these little, I think they were called wallet pockets, something like that. What you do is you sublimate on them and then you attach them to the back of your phone case and you can keep like your identification and a credit card in it. And like I said, until last night, this roll had never been used. I just didn't have the need for this really thin sublimation tape. So now this is the pad. It's kind of a thick, hard foam pad that came off my heat press. And then a Teflon sheet. And then I want to protect my Teflon sheet. So I'm going to put a piece of paper under it and a piece of paper over it. Then just to be extra cautious, another Teflon sheet. 
and I have my Cricut Easy Press 2 sitting right beside me, I've set it at 395 degrees for 45 seconds because that's fairly typical. So let's go ahead and put that on, let it heat up, and we'll see what happens. All right, so it's time to see the results. First of all, let's look at the back and the paper under it. Nothing came through. All right, let's start with this wide tape. I got this wide tape to use on my tumblers. I had it recommended to me by Industrial Fringe. I used it on my last tumbler around the top and the bottom, and I really liked how wide it was. So you can see that's clean. All right, let's go over to one of these free tapes. Okay, first of all, it is harder to get off the fabric. Not sure if the camera picks it up very well, but there is definitely a yellow stain right there. All right, let's go back to my old standby. Check it out. That looks good. And then the other one that I didn't pay for, again, and it's harder to get off. Ooh, and that's a very bright stain. So here's my suggestion to you. If you buy some tape you haven't used before, do a little test press. Just make sure it's not going to leave a stain on your project. Then the second thing is, if it does, there are some projects where you're just taping paper to paper. You're not taping to your substrate or to your sublimation blank. I'm not going to get rid of these two tapes, but I'm going to be really picky at when I use them. If I'm doing any project where the tape touches my substrate, such as this pillow, when I had the image that went to maybe about here and then I taped it, then I'm going to use one of the tapes that are proven not to leave a stain. So I hope that someone finds some value in this. Again, I will link to these two tapes in the video description below. But if you already have tape, go ahead and do a test press. Make sure it's not going to cause a problem. Thanks so much for joining me today. And until my next video, bye-bye.